And now moving to David Alvarez Castillo. Uh, greetings, everybody. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't see you, and I can't see. Now I can see you. Okay, so let me <laughs> share my screen. Just a moment. Okay, so we are a bit behind the schedule, so I will give you five minute warnings. So after 20 minutes, I will okay. let you. Okay, so. okay, I hope you can see my, my presentation now. Yeah, perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So greetings everybody, good morning. Um, I would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to speak at this very nice conference. This year, unfortunately, we couldn't meet like the past years, but uh, well, this is what we can do. Um, and I would also like to especially dedicate my talk to Professor Stuchlich and to congratulate him for, for his birthday and, and for his successful career and wish him all the best, of course. So I'm gonna talk about neutron stars. I'm gonna sort of give a review on the on the possibilities on the on what is the current state of the art of of the on the question of state and and for this I will consider different models and I also will um, consider uh, observations that serve as constraints to the question of the state. So we know that the neutron stars are uh, very uh, compact objects and, and very massive, so that make them uh, very dense. And uh, there's uh, a lot of uncertainty of what's inside these neutron stars. Uh, we know that they are mo mostly made of, of neutrons, at least in the, or for sure, in the outer layers uh, following this uh, supernova explosion. And uh, uh, interestingly, there could be different types of, of, of phase transitions into, into matter. Uh, towards the center, and uh, and as has been mentioned in the previous talk, there could be superfluid uh, material. There could be, uh, besides that, there could be pasta phases at the interface between the the crust and and the and, and the core. So by the way, the crust is meant to be something more like a solid, and, and the core is, is more liquid like. And um, one of the biggest question is what is exactly in the core, or, or, or what is the state of matter in the core where these these are are uh, the highest and 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 for this uh, let me just uh, try to uh, make a small exercise where we can try to uh, estimate uh, or try to imagine uh, how how dense is, is is a neutron star in, in their interiors so if we consider just the the nucleus with a nucleons and if we consider that the, that the radius is case like 1.2 10 to the minus 13 centimeters per Eight to the to one third, and we can come with an estimation of about 2.3 10 to the 14 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, if we just consider a neutron star of a bar of a let's choose something like 10 kilometers, and um, and use the same use a, use the same reasoning, <clears throat> and, and and consider that this star is as massive as two solar masses will come with a density of about 10 to 15 grams per cubic centimeter. This is about four times um, uh, saturation density, that's the, the density inside nuclei. And this will be the, the just a very rough estimation, raw estimation where, where this neutron star will be uh, of, of constant density. And, and we see that this is already four times the, the density of, of, an, of an atomic uh, nucleus. So we, 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 want, we, we then wonder what's inside there if, if there's uh, only protons and neutrons, or, or if these protons and, and neutrons uh, suffer a phase transition into something else like a quark one plasma. So uh, the story about the, the equation of state uh, uh, model or, uh, or hypothesis um, starts with the calculation of, of matter using uh, nuclear forces, of course, based on empirical data from laboratory experiments. And the way to compute it, the typical way to compute it, compute it is to uh, consider a system of, of symmetric matter. That's a system that has the same number of protons and neutrons uh, and, and find the, the, the energy per particle as a function of density. And we see that, that it, it, it has a minimum that will correspond to, to atomic nuclei. 
that, that's a that's a, 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 a that's bound matter because of this minimum. In the case of pure neutral matter, that that means only neutrons. We don't have these minimums, so so we have a rising function. And for neutron stars, we will have to combine these two these two components to get matter that is rather neutron rich in comparison to to symmetric nuclear matter. And we see that, for instance, here uh, there are many different uh, results that uh, do not coincide at higher densities where where there are not so, so many experimental points and, and there is uh, yeah, this uh, discrepancy. So this brings two different conclusions on, on, on neutron stars. So we're trying to, to see what could be the, the right one. Um, there have been attempts to constrain the stiffness of, of, nuclear, of symmetric nuclear matter. Uh, in the laboratory, for instance, you can see this, this uh, so-called flow constraint from this, from this article where uh, by means of heavy ion collisions, the others came to with some region of, of the, in the pressure versus density plane where where the matter should should lie. So basically, they they they, they have come to an estimate that matter should not be that that stiff, or or, or on the other side it should be a stiff. Uh, it should have certain value of, of a stiffness. Should not be that that soft. And I will explain you why this should not be that soft in the following slides. On the other hand. Um, uh, in contrast to, to the matter in heavy collision that is symmetric, the neutron star are neutron rich, and this brings some other uh, components, other quantity, the, the so-called nuclear symmetry energy function. That is basically the difference between the, the pure neutron matter minus the symmetric matter. And uh, this energy uh, is, the, is sort of difficult to, to determine in the laboratory because most of the nuclei are, are symmetric. Nevertheless, there have been many attempts for a review. I, re I refer to this paper where, where the, the authors present different constraints for, from, for instance, from giant dipole res uh, uh, resonance uh, measurements or from heavy ion collisions um, or, or by fitting nuclear masses of nuclei to try to find this, this, this term, that th these parameters of the symmetry energy that, that by the way, they, they may enter in the, in the bicycle liquid drop formula, so by fitting, they might get some estimates. So these are, these are the, the laboratory um, uh, empirical uh, constraints that, that, that have been put together to, to determine the, the, the equation of state. But this is, of course, around saturation density, uh, but we don't know about what happens uh, at higher densities. So to model the neutron stars, we basically have to compute the equation of state under certain, certain conditions like like uh, beta equilibrium and charge neutrality. That's the, the, the basic treatment. And, and we will end up with a function of, the, of pressure as a function of, of density. For instance, in this schematic plot, we have here uh, the central density in terms of, of saturation density. And, and, and this equation of state can be plugged, let's say, into the so-called TOB equations for spherical symmetric stars. And by integrating, uh, ah, and, and each of these points in, in that would correspond to a central density of the start would will be mapped into this into this other plot here on the right side, um, and this uh, actually is conjectured to be a one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, these equations are for, of course, for general relativity, for standard general relativity, and if we start to iterate, uh, picking up different uh, points for different central densities. We, we get different uh, mass radius configurations. So basically the whole thing is, is just a collection of many points that will correspond to many stars up to a point that, that will uh, be the last one that is stable. And after that, the, the next configuration will be unstable against uh, radial oscillations and it will collapse. It will cause a collapse of the neutron star. So basically um, any, any and any configuration beyond, beyond this point, uh, where, where the slope is like pointing uh, down in this direction, will be unstable. So this this is um, this is something interesting that there's a maximum mass, and this maximum mass is actually a question of state dependent. So this is a, a com in contrast to uh, white dwarfs, where the where the maximum mass is more or less well estimated from from the knowledge of, of the equation of state. So. Um, there, have, there are many uh, approaches to what is inside a neutron star, and this corresponds to different equations of state. 
Uh, we have heard just from the previous speaker about uh, strange quark matter. So this, this green lines here corresponds to strange quark matter stars. Um, the blue ones correspond to pure neutron stars. And uh, this, this uh, uh, violet one uh, corresponds to uh, neutron stars that will have some hyperonic content. So in, in this case, if the chemical potential, the baryonic chemical potential is reaches the, the mass of, of the hyperons and then the hyperons are energetically uh, fa favorable to appear. Uh, and, and then we have this kind of, of, of uh, equation of state. So when the, when the most massive neutron star uh, were um, discovered, so many of these uh, uh, equations of state, at least many of the parameters of this equation of state uh, had trouble. So, so some of them could be ruled out. And uh, in the case of the, of the hyperons, uh, the situation is that the appearance of hyperons uh, uh, makes the equation of state softer. It means that the maximum mass is, is way lower than, than for instance, uh, uh, than the corresponding uh, blue configuration of a pure hadronic. And this is because the, the, the Fermi momenta, which gives pressure, uh, has to be divided not only be in between the protons and neutrons, but now we have also other species. So this Fermi momenta lowers for these components and then it becomes softer. So this, is, this brings us to the so-called hyperon puzzle. So how is possible that, that there are hyperons, at least detected in experiments, and if there are neutron stars, if they are there, how can they uh, how can they support the two, two solar mass neutron star, the, the canonical one, the, the massive canonical one nowadays? Uh, and uh, and uh, this, this is a so-called hyperon puzzle, and many people started to, to uh, study the situation. Um, and uh, other of the, of the difficulties to try to identify the question of state from from just looking at the mass radius relation is that some of the equations of the state may end up having the same uh, pressure versus energy density line. And when integrating the TOB equations, we come exactly with the same, with the same line that lies on top of the other of, of two. So there's, there's a degeneracy. And this is what people have called the masquerades. So for instance, um, let's say some, some quark stars or some hybrid star may, may a masquerade as a hadronic star. So this is a problem because we cannot distinguish just by looking at the mass and the radius. So for this, of course, there are, there are different models that can avoid at the same time um, the, this problem of the masquerades and also can, can also uh, solve the hyperon puzzle in, in one way or another. And, and one of these possibilities is, is um, considering a, a phase transition, in, phase transition in, in the interior to, to the confined quark matter. So I will, I will elaborate more about this. Uh, what's the motivation for considering uh, the confined quark matter inside neutron stars? Well, if we think of the uh, QCD phase diagram, um, it has been um, conjectured and studied that uh, matter at, at very high temperatures and also at very high densities will suffer this, this kind of, of phase transition into, into, into the confined matter. And for this, uh, there have been theoretical studies in one side from lattice calculations that try to solve the, the, uh, the QCD Lagrangian that is a very challenging problem and that cannot be uh, solved into these regions with the current methods because there exists the so-called uh, uh, sign problem. And of course, uh, um, experiments like the ones carried in the Large Hadron Collider can try to probe this region of very high densities, uh, sorry, very high temperatures for low densities that will correspond to the early universe. Uh, to prove uh, regions here, let's say around the center of this diagram, we will need a new experiments of, of different kind. And this is um, what is aimed at, at, at the uh, nowadays uh, being built uh, facilities in, in Germany, in Darmstadt, at FAIR or in Nika in Dumna, where they try to collide uh, heavy ions, but trying to keep the, the, the temperature lower and, and try to reach heavy and try to reach uh, higher densities. So the neutron stars in this diagram will be located down here, um, where the temperature is low, uh, but the, 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 high, the density is high. And, and if we think about this, the uh, that the, uh, about the difference with, with symmetric matter in the collisions, then the neutron stars will have something like a third axis that will correspond to the asymmetry. Uh, and uh, so if you, we think of, uh, of a 3D, uh, QCD phase diagram, then the neutron star will be somewhere here in the around the bottom, in but but coming out of sticking out of the of the 
of the slide because of the third axis. So uh, nowadays uh, there, are, there are of course more, more uh, uh, complex uh, possibilities for the for the structure of the of the of neutron stars that will bring to to uh, alternative or, or to more refined uh, uh, QCD phase diagrams. So, for instance, in in, the, in these papers, the authors <coughs> consider that uh, the, the transition may be uh, we don't know what the nature of the transition, but it might be like first order, and and if that's the case, we'll have a like like a like a sharp uh, in the, like a density jump in this in this in this region. Uh, however, the, there's the open questions, and and these authors uh, also uh, spe uh, speculate or conjecture that that, that there could be that, that this first transition may not extend down to the to the neutron star uh, regions completely, but but it, it might, uh, for instance, have another another region of crossover where the transition is is uh, is soft. There's not this big jump in density. So if that's the case, then 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 we need to study models that that will um, have this uh, mixed phase. And uh, from the physics and mathematical point of view, there are two two possibilities. One is that the phase transition is uh, what what is considered to be the standard one. So basically, um, if we look at the pressure versus chemic, uh, chemical potential. We'll have one one line that will correspond to correspond to the hadronic phase, and uh, there will be another line here in, in, for instance, in red, that will correspond to the quark phase. And if we just uh, uh, follow them, they will intersect at some point. And and if, if this if we just uh, uh, how to say we just uh, create a model that follows on one point and then uh, switches into the other at, at the at this point. Then we can create a, a Maxwell construction that is a, a typical uh, construction in thermodynamics, and this will bring to the first order phase transition. But now, if we want to to model the the part of the of the crossover, then uh, one possibility is to to stop uh, to, to to remove, let's say, the parts that are in between in between these two extremes, and just interpolate from one point that will correspond to a chemical potential in the hadronic part into the it up to a point of the of a chemical potential in the quark part, uh, and this will bring some some uh, neutron stars uh, features in uh, features of neutron stars in the mass resolution, of course. And the other thing, the other possibility is to use this so-called anomalous anomalous, where, where uh, we basically start to mix both both phases. And and if you look at, at this plot, we have this this. Uh, Blue lines where the hadronic equation state is not valid, not valid anymore, and the same for this uh, quark uh, equation of state at very low densities is not valid anymore. So since both of them are not valid in this region, so what possibility is to start to mix it in in, in, in such a way uh, that, that 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 will have other kind of, of crossovers? So the prescription is here, and and then we will see what happens with the neutron stars. Let me let me move on. So let me consider the case of, of the first order phase transitions. So in the case of a very strong first order phase transition, uh, if we consider a simple quark matter model of the state where the slope is uh, that, that has a constant speed of sound, uh, in, in <clears throat> then if there's a very strong first order phase transition, um, the, the, the configurations in the in the, uh, in the mass radius will start to change its, its uh, shape, its topology. And if the phase transition is, is strong enough following some conditions that are called state of conditions, then the, there will be a discontinuity between in, in, the, in the mass radius relation uh, characterized by this uh, gap of unstable configuration. So the, this dot line corresponds to stars that are not stable, but then again, uh, appears this branch, the, the so-called third branch, uh, following the first branch of white dwarfs and second branch of, of pure, pure neutron stars, up to a, a, a second maximum mass. So th this this will be um, a quite interesting uh, a model because because we have this third branch. So recently in this work, uh, the authors have varied this this model. Um, and they have uh, uh, found that uh, if you vary, the, for instance, the, the speed of sound, uh, in quark matter, then you will have different uh, onsets of of, uh, of, uh, 
of these hybrid stars that contain quark matter in the interior. And uh, for these uh, models, all of, of by, by varying these parameters, you can find that the mass radius relations all meet in some sort of a special point, which is of, of interest. So what they've done is that they have varied in not only the, the quark matter speed of sound, but they also changed the question of uh, the, the hadronic equation of the state. And they came with this region where all these, these uh, common points uh, are, are located. So in this region, uh, hybrid stars can be, can be found according to the model. And of course, we have nowadays uh, constraints. So it would be interesting to, to see how, how, how this, uh, this region, um, wh what parts of the regions are, 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 uh, are physical or they're accepted. And uh, just to, what is interesting is that uh, if, if you consider um, equations of the state of hadronic matter, and also of, of uh, with hyperons that, for instance, in this paper ha have been computed uh, based on, on some laboratory experiments. They, they have found that uh, in, in this work, they have found, found that, the, that the software uh, hadronic equation of the state that is able to, uh, to achieve the two solar masses cannot go, cannot be smaller than 10 kilometers. And, and, uh, and, and the same for hyperons. Uh, we will have something around here. So for instance, if you see, if you look at this uh, black curve, this is uh, one of the most uh, popular equation state uh, called a APR or, or the noted APR. Uh, so th the situation is that this equation, according to this new result, this equation is no longer physical. So if we rely on, on these results, so we can find that the, both the hadronic and hypronic stars cannot go cannot have a radius less than 10 kilometers. So basically that, that leaves us with some room for the, for, the, for the hybrid stars to be located. So it would be very interesting if, if we measure an, uh, with precision a neutron star that lies exactly in this, let's say in this allowed region where only hybrid stars can be located. Of course, uh, I'm not discussing here um, stretch stars like, like, like in the previous case, but, but this is also another possibility. So this region, be below 10 kilometers, it starts to become uh, very interesting. Another of the of, of the advantages of this of these models is that uh, there could be a transition between the most massive star on the second branch branch up to the third branch, and and by uh, and this transition will be uh, related to a, a decrease on the size of the hybrid star, and therefore a, 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 a mass. Uh, a deficit or, or mass defect, gravitational mass defect that could be associated with energy release in case that is a, 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 like a, a catastrophic event. And uh, we have considered this scenario to try uh, in order to explain some eccentric orbitals for, for millisecond binaries. So for instance, if, if one of the, of the, of the stars, uh, if, if the system creates a circum, a circum stella, a cir circumbinary um, disk, then the neutron star may start to accrete matter. And at some point uh, it may suffer the phase transition and, and this will result into a kick of the neutron star. And then the, the system will not be any more uh, circular. So it, it might end up being uh, very much eccentrical or elliptical. And, and this will correspond to some measurements that, that have, been, uh, have, been, have been detected or performed. This, this situation has been detected. So this is, uh, possible for this. Now I will try to speed up because I'm running out of time. Five minutes, David. <laughs> okay. So let me just try to uh, flash out some of the most interesting recent uh, developments on the on the from the uh, from the astrophysics measurements. So we know that that what is uh, really exciting nowadays is that we have. Uh, uh, detection of gravitational waves. And, and the first uh, very exciting case was uh, GW170817, where both gravitational waves and also electromagnetic uh, signals were, were detected. And this allowed for some uh, estimation of the masses of the components that will be eventually translated into tidal deformabilities. So I will, I will not uh, focus or I will not elaborate on, on the computation of the of the tidal deformabilities for neutron stars, but but if you want to, you can look at these references, at this reference, and uh, 
if you have a model of, of, of a neutron star equation state, you can do the tidal deformabilities and, and compute the, the log numbers. And with that, you, um, the, 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 neutral, the equation of state will be mapped into this lambda one, lambda two plots corresponding to the two components. And what has been found by this, by, by this uh, measure, by, by this observation is that the question of the state apparently cannot be that stiff because they go away from these higher uh, probability regions. And of course, they cannot be that that soft because otherwise they cannot, they cannot support the two solar mass neutron star. Out of this, uh, out of this observation, there, there was also some estimation for the, the, the upper limit of, of a maximum uh, uh, of the maximum T of e mass, that's the static configuration. And this is, this is uh, studied in this paper uh, where, where that is related to the evolution of the, of the, of the product of the, of the merger of these two neutron stars. Um, I will skip this. So basically um, in the interesting case of the, of, the, of the twins, if we have the transition uh, uh, around the, the mass of, of, the, of, of this, uh, of these uh, stars that merge in the GW170817, uh, we can have uh, different combinations where we could have either hybrid uh, hadronic hadronic stars or hadronic hadronic um, uh, hybrid stars or even hybrid hybrid stars. And this can be mapped here. So this is very nice because if we have more detections, we will in uh, principle be able to, to tell something. Uh, moreover, there has been some estimates that the the, the frequency peak uh, after the after the merger may have a different uh, a, a different position in the case of of uh, of hybrid stars with respect to the pure hadronic. Um, unfortunately, for that event from 1770, uh, we we didn't detect this peak. So let's hope that with new observations will will uh, reveal this this information. And uh, recently, there has been another detection of another uh, gravitational event, this 1908-14. And the authors of this, of this study uh, um, claim that one of the components could be a neutron star. So one of them is very massive of the tw of 23 solar masses that for sure is a black hole. And the second one is of about 2.6 uh, solar masses. And, and if the second component is a, is a, a neutron star, a fast spinning neutron stars, they can come with, uh, to, to some after some argument, uh, argumentation that the maximum TOB mass should be more than 2.08 uh, solar masses. So this 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 bring you all these new constraints. So as you can see, we have excluded regions over here. We have something like a minimal maximum mass, and we have already measurements that lie right in between. So there should be something in there that the models might be might lie in this in this, this region. On the other hand, we also have the me measurements from, from nicer of, of, a, of a pulsar, but this gives you a, a, this huge ellipse and so on. So, okay, so let me just uh, tell a, a few words about the, that, that there might be some hint between nuclear, uh, between measurements in the laboratory experiments and astrophysical observations and, and in these papers, the authors claim that, that uh, if we use uh, nuclear physics information, we will have to uh, we will come with a to a narrower and stiffer uh, 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 region in the in the question of state that is we don't put any any information nuclear, on nuclear physics by, by by hand and just consider astrophysical scenarios uh, and this will of course come with different predictions for instance for the radius of the of of, of, of these uh, neutron stars mergers in the GW 17 or 8 17. Um, uh, finally, I will just uh, tell that we we have studied also this possibility that it's not only this first order phase transition, but most of a crossover. Uh, these are the two possibilities: is either uh, uh, like the normal hybrid models, uh, bringing to some to, to some probabilities of parameters, or the other case of the anomalous that I mentioned, bringing to so, some other possibilities. And um, okay, we can constrain the model under this assumption, but unfortunately we cannot tell by, by using Bayesian inference for all this data uh, what, is, what is really inside this, this uh, compact star. So this is the, the open question. 
what is in, inside the, the neutral star interior. And just as a teaser for, for what is coming next, um, just uh, very exciting is that there has been some continuous X-ray emission from GW17017. And uh, the authors of these papers claim that there might be some neutral star Rembrandt there. And, and so they have some, some X-ray fluxes. So this is also interesting and, and not open questions. Something that could be discussed um, under the context of, of rotations of neutral stars and so on. And with this, I would like to, to, to conclude just mentioning that perhaps the, the solution is, is the cooling of compact stars because it's independent of the, uh, it is another measurement of, uh, beyond the, the mass rate relation or, or the lambda or the tidal for the formabilities. But the problem is that the cooling of neutron stars is already as, as such a complex uh, problem that it has many free parameters and this brings. Uh, uh, on another degree of, of complexity or difficulty. So I leave you with a question of how to, how to determine uh, what is inside neutron stars without ambiguity, avoiding masquerades, because at the moment the Bayesian analysis is not enough. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, David. I think we have time for two quick questions. So please, Lodjek. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm gathering my thoughts. So, uh, thank you for this uh, uh, very extensive review. Uh, it was a real torrent of information. I'm afraid I will be only able to absorb it in the proceedings version because most of the transparencies were too small for me to, to, to see the details. Yeah. I, so, I will upload the talk so you can look at it. I just wanted to give you some impressions. But let me ask this you mentioned nicer, I see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on the radius mass diagram, I, uh, perhaps I overlooked it because of my eyesight, but I couldn't find any nicer constraints. And I, I know they have papers uh, claiming that they measured uh, the radius of the neutron star. So I'm wondering what these are on your plot. Yes, uh, sorry, I, I was uh, too, too quick. So if you look at the end of this, uh, uh, this mass radius relations with, the, with some of the constraints, so this ellipse that looks here, that is written PSR J0030 plus 0451. This uh -huh. is the nicer pulsar. This is the nicer, okay. Yes, right. So we, okay. we have here this ellipse that is nice because um, it, it's in the, in the interesting region. However, it's just sort of, uh, it, it's mostly redundant with, with other uh, measurements, at least in this region. So mm -hmm. this, this, is, this is helping, but not helping that much. So now the, the interesting thing is that NICER will try to measure one of these very massive, mm -hmm. uh, massive, massive pulsars. And if they can come with another ellipse over here, that will be very interesting because if the ellipse, for instance, doesn't, doesn't uh, allow for very compact stars, very, very small neutron stars, uh, then, then, then it will be uh, problematic for hybrid uh, stars. On the other hand, if, if, the, if the ellipse is centered around this very low value, uh, it might be uh, an indication that there was something that th there's a star that is has a transition into something else, or it, it or it is or if or that it, it is a strange star or something like that, something out of the canonical. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, David. Are there any other questions? So... I don't see any. So thank you again, David. Yeah, thank you so much.